You're watching Beyond Markets. Welcome, I'm Esther Awuni. Many thanks for joining us today. On today's show, we'll focus on Nigeria's power sector. You can join the conversation with the hashtag Beyond Markets and you can follow, send your thoughts, your comments to my Twitter handle. It's at Esther O. Awuni. Now, in a recent interview with CNBC Africa, the CEO of Siemens Nigeria, Onyeche Tifache, unpacked the new partnership between the company and the Nigerian government to help expand the country's electricity output to 25 gigawatts. According to her, a bulk of the solutions provided will be funded by the German Export Credit Agency. George Atomi, director of ECO at ECO Electricity Distribution Company, now joins me to discuss how to walk the talk. Thank you, George. It's a pleasure to have you My pleasure, on the show always. today. Now, as you know, uh, the CEO of Siemens was here not too long ago after that uh, agreement was signed with the federal government. And just to you know, recap if, uh, briefly a few of the things that you know, came out from that interview. She, first of all, she did say that, because that's what was in the media at first, that it was a, this is a six-year plan by, between the government and Siemens. And she said that, that there, there is no six-year plan. Obviously, they need to do some due diligence, of course, meet with stakeholders like, such as the discos, to evaluate and look at, especially as she put it in phase one, to see what the issues are. But let me hear your thoughts. When you heard about this partnership, I mean, what did you think and what does it mean for discos? Um, on the face of it, um, it is it, it, a step in the right direction. These consultations started about October last year when we were called to the presidency. Basically, um, of the visits by the German Chancellor to our president, they had discussions on how um, the German government could support the electricity effort. And uh, that um, as you mentioned, um, the German government agreed to do it uh, through an export credit mm -hmm. facility working with uh, their company Siemens. Now Siemens um, are well known in the industry. Uh, in fact, at the Code Disco, we've worked with them. So we know them pretty much. So the idea was basically to look at the bottlenecks uh, that exist in the value chain. And what was identified uh, immediately is that uh, concentration should be on the transmission and the distribution end. The transmission, because the facilities, um, uh, just like the distribution facilities, are antiquated, uh, they require to be upgraded, uh, they cannot consistently will the uh, volume of hmm. power that's currently being generated. On the distribution end as well, um, I'm sure uh, you will now be you, the, 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 the phrase cost reflective tariffs is now overflocked yeah. uh, because that does not exist and there's a cap in the MITO on capital expenditure by the discos. The required improvement even in the network, in the disco network, hasn't happened as fast as it should be rolled out. If I look at something like meters, for example, um, the metering gap still exists. Um, it can't be metered because metering is also a function of tariff. So much is going on. So the whole idea is to unlock um, these bottlenecks so that at least um, what is currently being generated, put roughly at between six and 7,000 megawatts, okay. can be evacuated. That's the initial plan. You strengthen transmission and distribution to take this. Uh, because remember, there was a time we had a peak generation of about 5,000 a few years ago. But when it was wheeled through the transmission lines, it basically couldn't take it. And uh, now we are wheeling at anything between three and 4,000 megawatts. So the, the idea is to get up to 5,000 megawatts consistently. Okay. The emphasis has been on consistently. So whatever needs to be done to strengthen transmission to achieve that will be done. Now, it is just as important to evacuate that power to get to consumers at the disco end. So which is why all their distribution networks, and there are quite a number of the bottlenecks. There are injection substations, there are feeders, there are transformers. There's so many things that need to be strengthened to at least evacuate that power. Installed capacity in the discos today, they can take about 6,000 megawatts today. Okay. Yeah, but like I told you, um, they, they are currently dealing between um, four and 
Okay, three and four so and if I could just come so. here, my question is how can this, and it's, it's good that, I mean, these bottlenecks, these challenges, because what she told me was that she will sit in phase one, sure. Siemens will sit with uh, discos and every other, you know, uh, actor to mm -hmm. identify what the challenge is, and she did mm -hmm. mention a number of them. I think for uh, the discos, she talked about obsolete equipment, weak mm -hmm. infrastructure, limited automation, even from the grid itself. Yeah. Can these problems be fixed? Oh, yes. Because I want to believe that before now, before Siemens came into the picture, we did know what the challenges were. Absolutely. So what was missing? What was missing? Cash. Okay. The system so now that Siemens is here, yeah, I'm just wondering what yeah, the, yeah, so what, now what the major Siemens, difference that Siemens is going to make here. Now that Siemens is here, based on the export credit facility, it means the cash will be made available. Okay. And you will then look at the equipment because it's also important to get robust equipment, which was why in the president's speech he said we will get equipment that will be European standard or German or European standard, whatever it is. In any case, if you are getting export credit facilities, the German government will do it through a German company. So the devil will be in the details because we look at these um, um, expansion, strengthening and then expansion programs, which the discos already have, because we do our performance um, evaluations all the time. So we already have this. For example, in Eco Disco, we've already identified the substations that require to be built, though that require to be strengthened, uh, the transformers, the feeder. We already have it. So Everything when Siemens comes, you just say this so is we basically where the discuss problem. with them, and, and then the details will then be okay, okay. How much is it going to cost you? What is because mm. we you need to look at the cost. And why cost is so important is that it is a function of the tariff. We still don't know now um, what will happen to the tariffs. There is a market reset that's going on, and we're hoping that um, the regulator now recognizes that we can't for much longer keep tariffs artificially down. So what we need to do is see how all these costs will be addressed in the tariffs. Now, once that is done, you would have freed up one major deterrent to investment in the sector, which is the price. Now, I know the question then becomes, what about those vulnerable mm. members of the, how do they do that? Then you can always come up with an instrument. But do you believe that that can be done? Because I, I sense that, I mean, if you say when this is done, but I feel like perhaps it's still if it will be done because that has been a sticking point for a very yes. long time yes. and could actually be that one stumbling block that doesn't that prevents you from going from A to B. I agree absolutely with you because from the outset when the privatization was done it was always recognized that we should have cost reflective tariffs. Then you know power is, those discussions, is, is, sorry to but in, yes. were those discussions you had with Siemens too? Yeah. In terms of, look, if we do not go past this, then it could end the progress. I, I can assure you, uh, Siemens themselves have mentioned it to the regulator. The regulator okay. is aware they're actually working on a tariff model as I speak to you. Okay, that the is good The issue will then be, um, you, they, they'll come up with different ways because they want to see how they can cushion the effect of a tariff increase if a tariff re reset results in an increase. Uh, they would have to see how they can cushion the effect on the most vulnerable sectors. Now, the concern that I have is that in delaying this sort of a decision, you are even forcing those who can afford it to look for alternative energy because you have flattened the market and everybody is getting this epileptic, epileptic supply. But if you segment the market, you can begin to supply those who are willing to pay correct tariffs if they see the electricity. This is the willing buyer, willing seller thing. And there are a number of those um, uh, policies that are coming up now. Already, for example, in the Eco Disco, we actually have representations from customer groups okay. within our network coming to say, okay, let's, let's work together. We are willing to pay cost-reflective tariffs, give us this, and we're willing to make those investments. Now, you, if you can... Um, sub franchise some aspects of your franchise area isolated for this purpose you can begin to create oasis of stable electricity supply while the those who can't immediately mm -hmm. afford it and emphasis on immediately afford it because eventually uh, when you have steady electricity it needs to greater economic activity and therefore greater prosperity and so those who might initially not be able to afford the new tariffs. We begin to come onto the new tariffs and therefore get better supply. So the market can be segmented. And the good thing is that um, five years of privatization, we've been able to do these studies. 
So we are going. To, we can hit the ground running when the Siemens arrangement uh, uh, comes on board. Okay. What we just require now is deal with the issue of metering because that's because once you begin to uh, talk tariff, uh, talk tariff, you want to make sure that meters, which is at the heart of the business, that's the trust. That's the instrument that creates trust between consumers and suppliers. Monitoring sure how much power yes, is actually exactly. being used. Exactly. So everybody is basically, okay. yeah, that's what we're doing now. Is and that also part of phase one? Because I want I yes. to talk you know, through the yes. phases that you know, Siemens has mentioned. I mean, yes. phase one, for according to Siemens, is going to be just you know, identifying and understanding what the issues are. I guess we that, already... That's practically we, done. We are, that's we, practically that's done. But practically we, were, done. we were speaking with Siemens and we, okay, so they requested us to submit all our requirements that was done. It's all done. That's all done. So and well, how, are we gonna, how will you proceed then, from there? What's, then, what's the next step? Then the next step would then be to um, cost these projects. Hmm. Cost these projects. And then because that's what the export credit facility will address. But that's why I said, I, I, I said that. Yeah, whilst you're beginning to cost the project, you must also be looking at um, how you can recoup the expense, which is why side by side, you must look address the tariff issue. If you do not address the tariff issue, the government will be forced to subsidize it. And I really don't know if that will be the way to go. Because if government is seen to continuously intervene, it means um, ultimately, those who would want to invest in a robust sector will be deterred, and government cannot continuously carry this load. So they must face the tariff issue, even though you can come up with schemes by which you can protect the most vulnerable. Right now, what it costs the average Nigerian to self-generate, I mean, makes a mockery of this issue of not allowing tariffs to find their proper level. People are spending phenomenally more to self-generate. Mm -hmm. But um, I think we're on, the, we're, we're, on the, we're on the right trajectory. All right, George, thank you for your time so far. We're going to take a break at this point and come back and continue from where we left off. I've been speaking to George Itome. He's a director at Eco Electricity Distribution Company. Like if you're just joining us, you're watching Beyond Markets. Uh, we have today George Itome, director at Eco Electricity Distribution Company, and we are discussing the implementation of Nigeria's electricity roadmap. Thank you, George, for your time so far. My pleasure. Let's talk about the meters. Of course, the, the meter, meter asset uh, providers was brought into the picture to sure. help you know ease the whole metering gap. Mm -hmm. Bring us up to speed for Eco, uh, for EKDC. How are things progressing for you? Well, again, uh, this is an initiative by the regulator to replace what used to exist: the credited advance metering payments uh, implement. That's the CAPME, as we used to call it. Um, under CAPME, it's important to know the essential difference between CAPME and uh, MAP. And MAP yes. Under CAPME, it was the consumer who paid for the meter. And then um, over a period of time, his invoices, his bills, uh, the, the, pay, the, the meter payment is deducted. In other words, the, Promise, okay. the consumer prefinanced the metering and all that. But on the map, a third party provider is introduced into the picture. That third party is the one that acquires the meters and then install them, installs them within the disco network. And then the gets a line charge on the invoices that are paid that goes towards paying that meter asset provider, no matter how he gets his monies. And I know many of them are talking to banks now to see if the, the banks will be willing to pre-finance them. I don't know how well those talks are going. For the company, what, why, <laughs> I mean, was it an efficiently run system? I, I cap me pre-existed privatization. Okay. Um, so there were concerns that many consumers paid under cap me, but never got the meters and never okay. got their money back. But I know that when we came in, we had to ad address quite a lot of backlog of people who had paid but didn't have meters. Okay. We didn't have the meters, we didn't see the money. So we had to do quite a lot of uh, clearing of the backlog. But otherwise, cap me, in my opinion, was working well because we eventually hit even kill and we, we we, we, we started addressing customer needs because it's, it's, it's a lot easier to deal with a customer who says, okay, I'm willing to pay, provided you can deduct this over a period of time. But now, as I told you, MAP is introducing 
a third, third party, party okay. provider uh, who will work with the discos and the discos and will get some priority payment when the discos receive monies and uh, all, all, the, all those details will be worked out. But I think um, there will still be room for those uh, customers who are willing to pay outright because I don't know, as I mentioned to you, how the talks between many of these meter asset providers and the banks are going and all that. As you see, there's no appetite, as you can, you can well imagine, for uh, lending institutions to look at the electricity industry because of all the yeah. uncertainties. Um, but if um, that happens, that would be very good because it then ensures that we can roll out meters very quickly and that is very key to whatever we're doing. Because if you are going to have a tariff review that leads to an increase, then the customer will be even more determined to ensure that he only pays for what he consumes. But are you and already rolling out meters? The meter, is meters. Tell, so uh, we're already rolling out meters. No, we already had meters. Okay. We already had but meters, which we are still rolling out until MAP kicks in. I think MAP is going to kick in um, this August. But we will do whatever needs to be supplied. Do you foresee, in the, do you foresee uh, any challenges? Any, any no, just the challenge that I just mentioned to you would just be how the emitter asset provider is. Uh, What's funded. been the response, I mean, from your consumer, well, very, from very, consumers? Very, very, ma rollout. very massive. Before now, consumers, let, let's, let me give credit to our consumers. You see, all they just want is power. And they've done their own bit to support the industry, apart from those who are still in power. Um, many, many are willing not a, to Not pay. a significant amount, because you no, know there's no, still that you know, one no, portion. Power theft. theft is huge. Those that may have sort of fallen through the crack, because we're talking about, you know, at, at some point we also talk about data. Yeah. I mean, to what extent have the discos captured oh, yes. the exact number of exactly. cost consumers that are attached to exactly. them? Yes. I mean, what is, it, what is your, your story? Are you... Oh, yes, we're, we're on top of that. fully I captured? Yeah, our enumeration is close to 90% complete now. Okay. Our enumeration, because again, you know, we depended on in, in figures given to us at the point of privatization, hitting the ground. We found there were there was a big gap. Same thing with the metering thing. So we did our own en enumeration. This is, these are all the things that are leading to the market reset that I talked about. Because you then basically reset the market, and then you then give more realistic loss reduction targets to the discos because this is what you can hold them to. That's the promise they've given to you. I'm going to reduce aggregate technical, commercial, and collection losses. But this is going to be against the background that you've given me accurate figures and the right environment to achieve yeah. all of these things. And we're moving in that direction Okay, now. let's step away from the discourse for a bit. Let's talk about the Transmission Company of Nigeria, TCN. Sure. I mean, speaking to Siemens, I remember she also talked about, you know, going to do a holistic, you know, mm. uh, deep look, deep dive into TCN and what the sure. challenges are. And I know that many times when it comes to what the major challenges are, you know, arrows always point towards mm -hmm. the TCN. Help yeah. us understand what these challenges are and <clears throat> how you see them being tackled by Siemens. Well, um, TCN, as you know, is the only member of the value chain that's still 100% uh, in the hands of the government. So naturally, it will fall to the vagaries of governance. They still have uh, to present their expenditure, budgets, approvals, mm. delays. So bureaucracy, red tape yes, and all times, that. Yes, at times, yeah, you don't match, you don't have a match between the desire to make a spending and when the funds are finally released, even when it's budgeted for, it's not a guarantee that it will be released and stuff like that. So within those constraints, you find that they are not meeting with the market needs. The equipment, and not just TCN, everything... Um, we had in that value chain was obsolete. So need to upgrade. They don't even have a functional um, SCADA system. You know, SCADA, that's the system that enables you, you are talking about data, okay. that, that to analyze your data, to know where, where, where um, uh, all, how all your facilities nationwide are functioning. They voted for it a number of times, but it's not there. So those are the things Siemens will be looking at and introducing into the system. Because right now, you, to physically send people around each of your um, injection stations to find to troubleshoot and all that, when you can actually stay within a data room and capture everything and make it seamless, you just know there's a problem. A red light is beeping here. 
you just immediately send. Right now they have to, it takes about three days to troubleshoot, not to talk about when it will take you, uh, what will take you to fix it. All that, once you, it's automated, all that then becomes uh, well taken care of. And then of course, there are transmission lines and all that. I mean, I always liken it, like I said, when you build um, a highway, um, beautiful highway, two lanes each, mm -hmm. but your population keeps growing. You do nothing about it. You do very poor maintenance of those two lanes, and just like Lagos is on the road, and your population has doubled or tripled. Not only do you need to fix what's existing, you actually at some point need to construct yeah. new ones, which is why at the point where the government is talking about 25,000 megawatts, they're actually thinking about adding new transmission lines and then also expanding distribution facilities so that at least um, we can begin to have a decent level of power generation in this country. But well, what do you think about the, about the timeline? I mean, two years from now, between now and the next two years, 7,000 megawatts and then I think 2020, Three, up until 2311 11, and then 25. Yes. Some say it's not ambitious enough. Some say, look, no, you no, know, no, if no, that's I, how I, we're going to crawl towards the goal. No, I, I, I think, I think um, we need to set ourselves realistic targets because managing expectations is another thing that's very important. You know, we are not a very patient people. People expected, oh, it's been privatized, and they expected well, when, when you, if, you've been, if you're, but you don't if you're a citizen them. in Nigeria and you've been waiting for 24-7 power for 40 years, I, know, I mean, I know, power I know, does, I know, uh, patience does run low at some point. I know, I know. I, I, I'm not blaming them for it. <laughs> uh, but realistically, the, what's vaunted is that, um, is that we have 13,000 installed capacity, um, out of which only 7,000 is being generated. And out of that 7,000, only a maximum of five is being evacuated. That's the argument. So the first order of business is, let us, that stranded power, let's push it out first. So let's do what we need to do. And you can strengthen the existing network to take that, which is the target 2021, and it can be achieved. And is there a willingness on the part of especially the government also to tackle whatever bottlenecks, challenges yeah, that you, you will come see, up along, and they you, will, obviously. Yeah, well, you see, what we need with government is policy consistency. Uh, you can see from all the discussions we're having is um, what's the problem with this privatization? It was not done under this government. So when they came in, they basically just sort of mm. moved and started a totally different power sector reform program that didn't speak to what was on Okay, but with this one, do and you feel a different complex. sense of relief? Oh, you, no, no, there is. That, there yes, is, there you is. Know, you like I said, the consultations were a lot okay. uh, wider. Um, it involved everybody except the Jenkos, and they are rightly complaining because you're also thinking about ramping up power to take what they are doing, and they say, well, somebody's talking about me, and I'm not even in the room. Uh, but let's say this first stage, which just simply requires us to evacuate the stranded power, doesn't entirely need them. But the stage in which you need to then close the gap between what's installed and what they need to now introduce new lines to evacuate, you need them. In fact, you actually need them to, to be on the table themselves today so that we can all begin to, as they say, sing from the same hymn book. Right now, the tunes are too discordant. The blame game is rife. It's not helping anybody. Uh, what we just really need to, it's, it was always going to be a tough thing to do, but it's doable. Okay. Every other country is doing it. So we, we we do okay, it. Judge, we only have 60 seconds. Let me just ask you this one question, and sure. I would like you to answer very briefly. I mean, you're obviously an investor in this, in this uh, sector. What is that one thing as an investor that you have learned being an investor in this sector? The one thing I have learned is that you have to learn to be patient. This, is always, this was always going to be a long distance game and all that. And um, I know many of us are not in a hurry to get back our investments, but there's a policy inconsistency that uh, we're all unhappy about. And what we just require now is for consistent government policy to recognize that it is market forces that determine price. Don't change the laws of economics because this is a game in which you need much bigger investors globally to come and they're not going to come if they don't find a consistent environment that is friendly towards the investment. Okay, George, thank you so much. It's been a pleasure having you on today's show. I've been well. speaking to George Itomi, director at Eco Electricity Distribution Company.
Well, that's it on Beyond Markets. Thank you so much for being a part of it. Remember that you can watch the show at 5 p.m. West African time daily and have access to all previous episodes of the show on our website at cnbcafrica.com. You can also stay engaged with the hashtag Beyond Markets. And, of course, you can send your thoughts and your comments to my Twitter handle at Esther O. Awoni. From myself and the team, it's bye for now.